Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use Azure DevOps to manage a Scrum project. Now, the website we want to go to is dev.azure.com, which is this one here. So let's go into a browser and browse over to that site. So we're going to type dev.azure.com. You can start with a Microsoft account or a GitHub account. Now the free tier of Azure DevOps allows for five people to collaborate on a project. I already have an account, but I will create a new account so that you can experience how it's done. I'll click on start for free and say, use another account. And I'm going to use a new account here. Click on next and it will ask me for the password. I'll enter the password and sign in. Now it's going to ask me for the project name. For my project name, I'm going to call it Commissions Project. Now I will keep private here because I want my project to be private. Alternatives are, if you choose enterprise, it means that only people in your organization can access this project. If you say public, then anybody can access the project. So I'm going to keep at private and for the country, I'm going to use Canada. And let me click on continue. So now my account is ready and I can start managing my project. Over here, we've got boards. So I'm going to click on backlogs. So backlogs is where you would enter your requirements. You've got sprints here. You've got boards and you've got work items. Now, when you work in a team, the first thing you need to do is invite other people to collaborate with you on the project. So to do that, click on invite and you can start inviting others. For example, I'll invite myself, but using another account. So I can say here, I'm going to enter this account and it did find me here. I can enter another account. For example, I'll add that account as well. And there we go. We have multiple accounts. So I'll click on add. And so I have others that can participate with me in this project. They can log in and they can have either admin access, which you would give to them, or they can have restricted access. So let's see some of the things we can do. As I said before, the first thing you should do is to enter the requirements of your project. So I'm going to click on boards here and backlogs. Let me click on new work item and enter a requirement here. So for example, I'm going to enter here as a user, I need to create an account. So this is going to be added as a requirement. Let me click on this and enter more details. So I can say here, for example, that users register to the web application using email and password. In reality, you should enter more information here. For example, you can enter that the password has to be encrypted. The uh, email should not already exist. You can also make sure that on the screen that is used for registration, there must be a confirmed password field all that information, you should enter it right here. So let's close this. Now, this is supposed to be a high level requirement. In order to fulfill this requirement, you may have to add some tasks. So you can click on this plus arrow here and add a task. And under there, you might want to say, create a registration page with fields, email, password, and confirm password for example, and let's save and close this. Now you can see that this is a subtask under our main task. Now let's have a look at boards. So I'm going to click on boards here and let's close this. On boards, we have our to-do items. So if we entered a lot of items in the backlog, you would see all of them down here. We have only one item and it's got these steps. We can move this from being in the to-do step to the doing step. And from the doing, you can move it to the done step. It's all up to you. You may want to add more columns to this. For example, 
I can come to the gear and choose columns. And in the columns list, I can add a new column and let us say we'll call it test save. So there seems to be something not right here because in the to do list, you go straight to test and then you do. So actually test has to come after you do. So we want to move the test column to after the doing column. So we can go back in here, choose columns again, drag and drop this over there so that it's in the right position, save and close, and everything seems to be better now. Now, this really hasn't been done because maybe it has to go through this step first. It has to go through doing. After it's gone with doing, we're going to do testing for it. And after we test it, it's going to be done. You can drag and drop the item along with the statuses that it belongs to. To make this more interesting, let us add another work item. So I'm going to click on new work item here and say, as a user, I need to log in. Here's another item. And for this one, we will create a subtask and say, login with email and password. And let's add this. So now we have two items and each item has a sub item. Let's go to our board and have a look. Now we have two items here. I can take both of them and start working on both of them, or I can keep them out. It's really up to me what I want to do. Next, let's look at sprints. So I'm going to click on sprints here and we have only one sprint and a sprint is a mini project that typically takes maybe one week, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, not more than four weeks. Let us add a new sprint. So we're going to call the sprint two. We can set the start date. Let's say it's from this day to this day and create. So now we have two sprints. Now the first sprint, we want to add some items from the backlog into our first sprint. How do we do that? This is part of the sprint planning process where the development team, the scrum master and the product owner, they get together and they decide, okay, for the first sprint, what are we going to do? So let's decide on what we're going to do in the first sprint. So let's click on backlogs here and you will see the sprint one and sprint two, they show up. Let's say we want to do both items in sprint one. So we can just simply drag and drop them here. Click on sprint one. This is sprint one. We have two items here. One thing about sprint one is that the dates have not been set. We set the dates for sprint two, but not sprint one. So if you want to do that, click over here and click on set dates. And we can set the date for sprint one to be from this day to May the 8th. That's fine. Let's click on close. So now both of them have start and end dates. These are some very simple things that you can do with your project. There are many things that you can do with Azure DevOps. I suggest that you investigate and try to discover all the other features. One feature that I like is under overview, there is wiki and the wiki allows you to document things about your project. For example, I'll say this project was requested by the payroll department in order to pay commissions to the sales force, for example, whatever it is, anything you want to write, you can write it right here. Let me fix this spelling. And you can see that the first pane is the pane where you can enter stuff. And then the other pane shows you what it's going to look like when you save. Oh, I have to give it a title. Let's say I'll say here, overview and let's say so now if i close this and i go to my wiki this is what i've written it's a good place to keep documentation and this is the summary and the overview page one thing that we should also think about especially as developers in the it field you would be working with software now azure devops doesn't have to be used for software projects it could be used for any kind of project but i'm a software developer and most likely I'll be working with code. So let me show you how you can store your code in the repo section. And this is really very much like GitHub. It uses Git for source control. So let's see how we can use Azure DevOps to save our code into the repository there. So I'm going to use Windows instead of the Mac, just to show that you can work in a team where one member of the team 
is using Windows, another member of the team is using Linux, another member of the team is using Mac. So now I have changed to Windows. And I would go as the administrator to the main site. And the main site is dev.azure.com and the ID given to your instance of Azure DevOps. So I'll take this and then I will log in as the administrator. You'll be asked to select an account. I'll select this one, enter the password and log in. And let's say I want to add another user. So I would come into the project and invite. And let's say this time I want to invite another user and this user, and he'll be part of the commissions team. I'll add him. Now let me log out of here and then I can sign in as this other user. It's always a good idea that after you log out, you close the browser just to make sure that there is nothing cached in there. So I'll open the browser again and go to the same site. And I should be asked here to log in and I'll log in with another account. This time I'll enter a different password. And once I'm in, I can go into that project, which I was invited to join. And let's say I want to push my code into there. Now, if you look at repos, you choose repos here, you will see that there are many ways to put your code in Azure DevOps. One of them is to push an existing repository from a command line. So let's assume that we have our own code. In fact, I'm going to quickly create my own ASP.NET Core C Sharp code and I'll push it. So on my computer, I'm going to go into the command line here. And from here, I'll execute a few commands. I'll create a directory for commissions. I'll go into that directory. And in here, I'm going to create a .NET MVC application that uses individual authentication and also uses local DB, which is the stripped down version of SQL Server. So this is the command, I'll hit that. And one thing you should always do when you're dealing with Git because we're going to use Git to push our code into Azure DevOps repository is that we must have a Git ignore. And the Git ignore is a file that excludes certain files in your application that you do not want to push into source control. Some examples of that are like DLLs. You don't need to push those into source control. You don't need to push files that contain some confidential information like connection strings and so on and so forth. So there is a git ignore that Microsoft has made. You can create one of those by going .NET new git ignore. And that should create for us the git ignore file. Now, since we want to push this code to Azure repos, we have to initialize a git repository first. So it's git init is the next command. And we want to add all our files, which would be git add dot and finally we want to commit our file so we'd say git commit which is minus m and a message and this should commit it now we go back to the website and copy these commands the first command is git remote add origin and this address so let me copy this and go into this command line and paste that so what this command is going to do is it's going to create a remote repo by the name of origin and it is pointing to this address so i'll hit enter here and if i type in git remote you will discover that now you have a remote repo called origin that's defined by that address the next command is git push minus u all copy this come down here and paste it it should ask me now to authenticate and i will authenticate with this other account and so i'll sign in into this account and you can see now it's going to push the code using the credentials of the account that was newly invited into the project let me go back into Azure DevOps. And if I click on repos, you will see that my code is here. This is how you share code in a project with other contributors. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in future videos. Cheers.